Kia ora. Welcome back to another episode of video podcast series, Influences at LU, brought to you by Lincoln University's Faculty of Agribusiness and Commerce with me, your host, Hafsa. This is where I ask faculty experts questions about the most pressing topics for the world today, hoping for insights so that they can lead us through these uncertain times. Today, our topic is a very interesting one. We are talking today about bioeconomy or circular economy, and is this the right time to start? I have today with me, my guest is as Alan Renwick, who is the, who's a professor of agribusiness uh, economics at Lincoln University. A main focus of his work has been the economics of agricultural and trade policy and the economics of agri-food supply chains uh, from crop production through to retail pricing. Recently, his research has focused on the innovation process within the agri-food sector with a particular focus on understanding the factors driving land use in New Zealand. This has included significant contributions to our land and water next generation systems project and the SLEMAC project evaluation of profitability and future potential for low emissions uh, productive uses of land that is currently used for livestock. So very welcome to you, uh, Alan. Thank you, Hapsla. Thank you. So my first question uh, is for the benefit of everyone as, you know, uh, w what is the concept of bioeconomy or circular economy? So if you can just enlighten us. Um, thanks, Hafsa. Yeah, I mean, as with many things, there's some debate about what we mean by bioeconomy. But if we look at this, there's probably three characteristics that we will see with it. Really, the first idea is about sustainably using our natural our biomass resources. And then it's really about a reduction in waste and pollutants associated with that use. And then it's coupled often with a transition away from a dependence on fossil fuel resources. So we want to move away from a dependence on those. And the final element really is to achieve economic and social growth and employment. So it's really about biological, but it's also about economic in it. And the bioeconomy was initially kind of, I guess, closely associated with biotechnology. But really, we like to think of it as something broader than that. And it's kind of also closely linked this idea of a green economy, or mm -hmm. as you said, the circular economy, you know, that idea where outputs and waste from one sector can be inputs into another sector. So it is closely linked with the ideas of green or circular economies as well. All right. Thank you very much, Alan. So, uh, you know, the, the, we have been working towards this idea of a circular economy for a while now. So do you think there is an opportunity for us to look at this idea of a circular or bioeconomy now? Yeah, I think it, it's, it's overdue in one way, uh, but I do think it, it, it's a good time now. You know, we have um, two main drivers, really. I think we have an economic driver, and part of this relates, in a sense, to the, to the, you know, the hit the economy has taken because of COVID-19 and, and the pressures that are occurring on our tourism sector. So potentially, there's an uh, opportunity here for the primary sector to um, step up and take up some of that slack in the economy and grow. But at the same time, we were having problems with our uh, primary sector before COVID-19 came along in terms of the environmental and social impacts of the systems that we've developed. Mm. So there's also an opportunity there in a sense to address some of those social and environmental drivers whilst also boosting the economic contribution of the sector. Mm. So in so in in um, in fact, then this is going to be a, a whole wholesome approach to looking at how we want to resolve our uh, our concerns going forward. So because you spoke about the sectors, how can we transform our sectors here? You know, and which ones should we really be focusing on? You know, could you share some examples with us? Yes, I think rather than focus on specific sectors or target specific sectors, I think we like to think of the bioeconomy as more about the whole system of mm. our use of biomass and really a whole way that we use our land. And so we think really about trying to change our, our overall systems from where we've kind of generally got a, a prevalence of systems where we have specialized uh, enterprises reliant on external inputs and dependent on global markets. What we want to move away is from that sort of model 
of, of land use to one where we have more integrated um, land uses. I mean, we can see a couple of um, examples just from, um, you know, ranging from a very simple example. So if we take Yeelands Wine, um, you know, many, won many awards for sustainability. And what we can see there in their, in their systems that they incorporate compost waste from nearby regional aqua, aquaculture farms as fertilizer. Mm. They also farm um, baby sheep to graze between the vines in place of fossil fuel machinery. And so that kind of also provides a, a diversified farm product. So we can see a sort of integration mm. of, of systems there. Um, but we can go to a much more sort of complex level which is the idea um, we talk about industrial symbiosis. And here's the idea that two or more industries uh, that are associated kind of co-locate together, such mm. as the way some one industry can become the feedstock for another production unit. And we have examples of this in New Zealand um, around wood production and geothermal energy production in the Karawa uh, region. And here, the two, two industries, the geothermal production and the wood um, have sort of co-located so that the outputs of ge uh, geothermal production can be used to help um, the processing industry there. Mm. So we can think about, and there's many examples um, from farming crayfish in fire ponds in forestry. And even if we think about some of our established, you know, what we would now say more established industries, kiwi fruit or wine growing, they came out of niche production that has grown. And they mm -hmm. have, you know, elements of the new bioeconomy, they're high value crops um, producing, you know, a lot of revenue and, and, and income to the country. So we have examples. Um, in terms of thinking about the way we sort of get there, it's really a sort of issue about push and pull factors. I, I like to think of it this way. You know, on one hand, we want to discourage practices that are, you know, in a sense, damaging our environment uh, or socially unacceptable. And we often do that through regulation, which is sort of pushing people away from current land use to a more bioeconomic um, thinking. But at the same time, we can't just push them away from something if there's nothing there to pull them towards it. So the mm -hmm. pull part to me is we also need to find ways to enhance the profitability of systems that fit into our bioeconomy. Mm -hmm. And we need to sort of think about how we create new markets, how we achieve scale in these markets. You know, mm -hmm. these are important things to do. And that kind of links to thinking about how we spend our research and development money, how, how government helps this, and how innovation can help this too. Right. So um, I, I think that there are some very valid points there in terms of, I think, in terms of the integration that you're talking about, Alan. And secondly, about the idea of the push and the pull in terms of if you're pushing someone from away from something, what are you pulling them towards? So uh, I think that the next question that uh, that kind of links in, in with that point that you mentioned is, so, and, and you know, you briefly uh, mentioned about regulation. W what, what else is stopping us in New Zealand from choosing this path of a bioeconomy or a secular economy? Yeah, no, I think the key thing here is that we've got to recognize it's not gonna come about by chance. Um, you know, we have, a, we have a system in New Zealand where we're quite very reliant on the market to drive mm. our land uses. And as I said already, we counter that to some extent by, by regulation. But I, I don't feel this is something we can just leave to the market to hope us to get this sort of coordinated view of the land use. You know, really the problem for us has been there's very little strategic development in New Zealand to look about what a bioeconomy might mean for us and how we add this value with reducing the environmental impact. So therefore, I think we need more strategic thinking at New Zealand PLC level, which you know does come from the top. We need leadership from government and, and, and sort of uh, signals from government to support this transition. Mm. We also need sort of, you know, you know, we have a very low expenditure in New Zealand on research and development. You know, I think we spend about 1.2% of GDP on research and development, which is about half the OECD average. Mm. You know, this is going to be about, you know, developing new technologies, new approaches. It's about innovation. But again, they don't come about 
by chance. We're going to need to invest, you know, at the government level, but also at the industry level in developing these new um, products, new technologies that can help us help mm. us move. So really, I think, you know, a lot of this is about leadership and strategy and ways of working that we can, you know, we have many, many really exciting niche niches in our land use and primary sectors, but it's really about how we can think of models where we can get people working together, sectors working together to, to grow into these, uh, grow, grow these niches into scale that can actually really make a difference mm. um, to, to our land use. So I think these are all um, really important important factors for us to to look at. Mm. So th there are some really valid points that you've made here, Alan, in terms of the government leadership and the strategic uh, overview of seeing where this is going to take us in the long term. Because uh, at the uh, because at, at the outset, that like, like you mentioned, it is about integration, and in order to do that, you obviously need a lot of collaboration across a lot of agencies to help you achieve that. So um, essentially, you know, if I'm correct, the concept that I'm getting here is that through the bioeconomy, what we are trying to do is ensuring that we can unmake everything we are making. Would that be a correct interpretation? I mean, it's a nice way of, of, of thinking about it. And, and, mm -hmm. and again, it's a bit like this idea of we think about that from the cradle to the grave, mm. or we think about products from the cradle to the cradle that really nothing, you know, nothing's getting thrown away, that we can always use the waste products from one system as an input into another, another system. And the more we can do that, and yes, you say, and when you get to the final product, that basically can be recycled or reused. And mm. I think it's an attractive way as a sort of you know something for us to aspire to when we're thinking about our systems definitely yes right and i and i was doing a little bit of research around this topic before we started our discussion and the ministry for the environment has acknowledged that doing this in the long term will have you cost savings local job opportunities encouragement of technical innovation like you just talked about and reducing the harmful waste produced and obviously these are all going to have impacts in reversing uh, you know our impact on climate change so obviously there is a lot of opportunity in this space and that's what we want to start to initiate through these conversations and and as we begin to relook really at how we want to do things that after the you know the pandemic's kind of caught us the circular economy uh, or the bioeconomy may be an opportunity we don't want to miss out on so on that note, yes, Alan, did you want to add? So, in? Just to say, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of this is about win-wins. You know, often we, we talk about trade-offs between environment and the economy, but mm. where the circular economy and the bioeconomy can give us that we can achieve more, we can have this higher value from our land use, but at the same yes. time, we can really reduce our environmental input. So yeah, I just sort of echo what you were saying there is, is that we can focus on these win-wins and we can get a long way that way too. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And, and thank you, Alan, for those really, um, you know, uh, uh, in, in, insights into this, this field, because, and I really appreciate your time today in talking to us and sharing those insights with us. And obviously the conversation will continue with, you know, with the right people that will get in touch with you and, and they can do that by going on to Lincoln University's website and getting your details from the staff profile. Uh, and as for me, I'll be back again with more expert insights from the faculty with another episode. So thank you very much, Alan, for joining us. Thank you, Hafsa. And thank you, uh, everyone, for watching this. And we look forward to your feedback and comments. So you can send them through to me directly at hafsa.m at lincoln.ac.nz or you can message me on LinkedIn. So kakite no and uh, goodbye, everyone. <laughs>